The stiff paper was surprisingly easy to tear. Faye watched with contempt as Brennan's face split in two. The fragments fell to the floor and she reached for the next photo in the box. The photo showed her and her ex-boyfriend standing in the school gymnasium side by side. She had one arm around Brennan's waist while the other hand gripped the neck of her guitar. She was holding her guitar because they were celebrating her first music performance at the school talent show. This photo was also thoroughly destroyed before it was discarded. When Faye picked up the next photo, she paused. This photo was also from the performance night, but instead of Brennan, it was her mother standing with her arms around Faye. She twisted her wrist, but hesitated as the tear formed in the corner. Her mother was a photographer. Every one of Faye's memories were documented somewhere in one of her mother's albums. Faye wasn't in either of the next photos. The first she pulled out was a photo of her mother and Mrs. Wilson. They had wrapped each other in a huge hug, grinning and squealing like they were back in high school. In their minds, they probably were. Mrs. Wilson had been best friends with Faye's mother since middle school, and somehow they stayed friends all the way to the end. The other photo showed Mrs. Wilson, but this time next to her was her son. Arthur had been my partner on the performance night, backing my guitar with the piano. It seemed like their mothers expected Arthur and Faye to become fast friends like they had been, but she'd always seemed to prefer, prefer her guitar. Her hands startled open when she heard the car door slam closed in the driveway. Her father was back from the funeral. She winced against the bang of the front door and the incoherent swearing. He was drunk already. She looked back at the photo on the floor. She picked it up but froze before returning it back to the box. The picture on top of the stack didn't have any faces, but the most memories. It was a photo of a list. Brennan had found the notebook in her father's things, and without consulting her, showed it to Faye's mother. When her mother saw the list, her face went white. She took a photograph of it before returning it to its hiding place and driving into the lake. The photo felt hot in her hands. She threw it back into the box and slammed her face into the pillow. Faye closed her eyes and attempted to sleep, hoping to drown the grief with the black. Faye knocked twice before opening the door. Having just returned from school, she entered the kitchen to search for a snack. Faye, grab the wine, will you? She snapped her head around to look into the living room. It was her father who had called. He sat on the couch, laughing and drinking with a woman Faye had never seen before. There were empty bottles already strewn across the t coffee table. The wine? She put her hands on her hips. Her father motioned with his hand toward the cabinet. He was already drunk, giggling and teasing to the mysterious woman. Faye scowled. Never mind, I'll get it myself, he whispered into the strange woman's ear. Her father stood and moved towards Faye, and raised a finger at her as he entered the kitchen. Faye let her mouth fall open in disgust. She shut the cabinet door, blocking him from the wine. What do you think you're doing? She pointed to the living room. She couldn't describe how angry she was. She couldn't believe him. He was dating already, having no respect for the dead. She took a breath and opened her mouth to scold him. The snap of his hand against her jaw forced her mouth closed. He whispered, Go upstairs. I don't want to see or hear you. Faye nodded quickly, trotting up the stairs, trying to hide her tears. There was no relief when her head met the pillow. The black behind her eyes seemed to have been replaced with a hollow emptiness. Her pocket buzzed, and Faye pulled out her phone. Hey, it's Arthur. My mom was wondering if you and your dad want to come over for dinner tonight. Faye sniffed and sat up before texting back. What time? Arthur lived in the neighborhood over from hers. The two neighborhoods were connected by a walking trail that wrapped the lake with an offshoot sitting between the neighborhoods. Faye, Faye walked the trail slowly. The sun was slowly setting, creating a red hue across the lower half of the sky. The grass crunched under her feet, and she crossed over it. She walked slowly down the dock, stopping when she reached the end. She looked out onto the lake, the reflection of the sunset flooding the surface with golden light. The light was warm and welcoming, and Faye found herself leaning over the edge. All she had to do was let go. Someone giggled behind her. Faye turned to see a little girl running across the dock. She blinked and realized there was a family fishing on the shore, and the girl's mother was calling her back. Her eyes were on Faye, a concerned look in them. Suddenly, the warm reflection turned pale. Instead of welcoming, it had seemed naked and revealing. Faye turned slowly and walked back down the dock. The door opened immediately under Faye's knock, and Arthur's mom greeted Faye with an enthusiastic hug. She instructed Arthur to put away Faye's jacket. Arthur immediately complied, and Faye, and Faye was ushered into the dining room. Mrs. Wilson enthusiastically loaded Faye's plate with more salad and spaghetti than she could possibly eat, while the rest of the family served themselves. The dining room was loud. Arthur's siblings, a brother and sister, were arguing while their father attempted to mediate the issue. 
Arthur, on the other end of the table, listened with interest as his mother asked question after question to Faye. She asked after her father, her school, and her music. Faye explained that her father had a sudden business trip. She smiled and answered each question while barely touching her food. At the end of the night, it had gotten dark outside, and Arthur's mother insisted that he drive Faye home. Faye protested, insisting she was fine, but it wasn't up for debate. After his mom left the room, Faye sent Arthur to retrieve her jacket and slipped out the front door before he could come back. The light had completely left the water. The waves were black. They splashed up at the dock, pulling at her feet. The air was cold, and the wind seemed to suck her down. She took a deep, shaky breath and braced herself, pushing against the rail. A bright white light flashed behind her, and a car horn blared through the night. Faye turned to see Arthur's car parked in the cul-de-sac behind the walking trail. He got out of the car and waved a mass of fabric at her. You forgot your jacket! Faye snapped with the car door shut behind her and buckled into the passenger seat. Arthur started the engine and pulled away from the curb. He glanced over at her. What were you doing? Faye's jaw clenched, and she shrugged the question off. He prodded, asking if she had dropped something in the water. Faye turned to face the window. Arthur frowned and reached over to turn the radio on. The soft country music filled the void between them. Worried, he glanced over at her. Her foot was tapping along with the music, and for a moment Arthur thought he saw her jaw release. Faye awoke the next morning to silence. The house echoed as she stepped down the stairs into the kitchen. The fridge creaked up as she opened the door. It was empty. Faye checked the pantry and the freezer, but only turned up with a half-empty, frozen loaf of bread. The wine cabinet, ironically enough, was also low, with only two bottles in the far back. Her phone buzzed, and she found a new message in her inbox. Arthur had sent her a message, inviting her to lunch that afternoon. Faye stuffed a slice of bread. Faye stuffed a slice of bread into her mouth before responding. Arthur picked her up a few hours later. Faye blushed as he opened the car door for her, and as soon as he was in his seat, he flipped the volume up on the stereo. After a few minutes, Faye reached over and turned the volume down, asking about his mom. They pulled into the parking lot of a local burger joint. When they entered the building, Faye gazed with big eyes at the menu on the wall. At first, she seemed uncomfortable, but she decided quickly on her order. Arthur paid for their food and sat down in the booth in the back. It was a kind of building that was so old, it didn't matter how hard you scrubbed the walls or floor, they would always look dusty. The benches creaked as they sat down, but the table been, didn't budge under the weight of their meal trays. Faye practically dove face first into a burger. It was gone in seconds. Arthur watched with a smirk as he pushed his own fries onto her plate. Are you playing guitar at all? Faye swayed her head from side to side, using one hand to hide the fries in her mouth and the other to shake in a similar motion. When I have the time, she swallowed. My dad gave me his old guitar. He licked his lips. Would you want to come over sometime and check it out? Faye nodded and promised she would walk over the next day. The sun warmed Faye as she walked down the dock. The sun warmed Faye's face as she walked down the dock. The firm planks squeaked under her feet, and her image reflected back at her through the puddles of water at the end of the dock. When she stopped, she pulled her mother's photograph out of her pocket. Faye stared blankly at the names on the list. Some of them were short and strange, more like aliases than real names. And then there were some normal names on it, but most of them fell off of the edge of the picture. Faye lifted the photo up to the sun. She leaned against the railing as she watched the light pass through the paper. Using both hands, she tore the stiff paper cleanly into halves. Faye dropped them onto the crystal water. She watched the paper float. It rested on the surface of the water and took some time before it dissolved and sank into the water. Faye returned to her original path, walking back up the dock and continuing on the walking trail. She let the tears fall silently down her face. Opening the door of Arthur's home released a cacophony of sound. Each family member seemed to be engaged in a separate activity, but they all individually added to the storm of noise surrounding the house. Arthur quickly guided Faye up the stairs and into his room. He shut the door to muffle out the distractions. The room was normal. The room was a normal size, but it seemed smaller because of the laundry stacked around the edges of the room. He dug through his closet and extracted the fabled guitar and dropped onto his bed with it in his lap. His hand hovered over the strings before softly plucking each string. Faye chewed her cheek against the flat tones. Once the instrument was, as he decided, tuned, he then began a strumming pattern, clumsily switching between chords. Faye smirked and put her fingers over his, forcing him to stop. She took it from his hands, swiftly and correcting... She took it from his hands, swiftly and correctly tuning it and playing a soft melody under her skilled fingertips. Arthur threw his hands into the air and laughed. 
You caught me. The time passed by quickly, and they hardly noticed it, as Faye showed Arthur the bas basics of the guitar. She suddenly looked down at her watch and paled. I have to get home. She jumped up from the bed and began shoving her shoes back onto her feet. She didn't bother to tie the laces. As soon as she stood up, she rushed to the door. Arthur put the guitar away. I'll drive you. Faye waved at Arthur before slamming the front door shut. She got to work immediately, vacuuming the floors and couches. She didn't hear her father come in, but he soon made himself known. There was no greeting for her as he entered the kitchen. Why was the door unlocked? Faye's mouth fell open as she realized that she forgot to lock it when she got home. But before she could apologize, she was interrupted by a knock at the door. Her father left to answer the door, but when he opened it, he called for Faye. Arthur was at the door, sheepishly holding her cell phone in his hand. Thank you, she whispered. She quickly took it from him. Faye could feel her father's eyes boring into the back of her head. Arthur frowned. I'll see you tomorrow? Faye wobbled her head. Yeah, she shut the door quickly. Was that the Wilson's boy? His voice was deceptively soft. Faye looked down at her shoes. I must have left my phone at school. It's Sunday, he growled. Faye shifted guiltily. The blow was quick and sharp across her cheek. Faye cried out in surprise. She stumbled backward and landed against the door. All subtlety was gone from his voice as he shouted, Don't you dare lie to me ever again. If you... Faye's teeth rattled against... Faye's teeth rattled as someone on the other side of the door pounded loudly against the wood. Her father grabbed Faye by the shoulder and wrenched her away from the door. Go to your room, he whispered through his teeth. Faye slowly stood up and turned to leave, but stopped when she heard the voice at the door. There was an officer at the door. He introduced himself and explained that he had received a call about some suspicious activity. Faye turned to look at the man. There was another officer standing behind him, but Faye wasn't looking at him. Arthur was standing tense behind both officers. He might have looked worried or scared, but he was watching Faye's face too intensely for her to tell. You called them? She mouthed at him. He shook his head wildly, and her father turned around, realizing that she was still there. I thought you were in your room. His voice was still harsh, but he skillfully veiled it in, in a playful scold. The officer held his hand up, motioning that he wanted her to stay put. He turned to Faye's father. Sir, I have a search warrant. I need you to let me in. He started to push his way in, but her father pushed back against him. He fought back, trying to push the officer back through the door, but Faye's father was eventually pressed against the wall. Officer Davis made a signal with his hand, and a stream of police that Faye had no idea were there rushed in a line into the house. As they searched the house, her father was escorted into a car, and Faye and Arthur were advised to wait out on the lawn. Faye remembered Arthur's hand in hers as he called his mother to explain what had happened. His mother arrived shortly and immediately began talking to Officer Davis out of earshot. Soon the curtain was pulled back and the enormous amount of condemning evidence was found and bagged for investigation. Arthur's mom helped Faye pack a bag and Arthur offered to drive her back to the house. After everything was arranged, his mom got back into her car and followed the police back to the station to further discuss what the next steps were. The door of Arthur's car snapped shut beside Faye. The sound punctuated the silence between them. Arthur started the engine, and after a moment of thought, he reached into the radio. Arthur started the engine, and after a moment of thought, reached to start the radio too. Before his hand reached the switch, he was interrupted by a sound. The sound was soft, but regardless, it shattered the silence. Arthur looked over at Faye in the passenger seat, crying uncontrollably. His arms were around her in an instant. They sat there for a long moment, with nothing but Faye sobbing between them. Arthur shut the door to his room, put his bags on the bed, and groaned as he threw himself onto the bed next to his bags. He and his mom had a he and his mom had just finished a long drive and arrived home from Memphis. It had been decided that Faye shouldn't be around for her father's trial, so even though it wasn't scheduled for another month, Arthur and his mom both drove Faye to settle in early with her aunt and uncle in Memphis, Tennessee. They could only stay over the weekend. They could only stay over the weekend, however, and Arthur and his mom drove back Sunday morning. Arthur lay on his bed, enjoying the few moments before he had to unpack and prep for the coming school week. His phone buzzed, distracting him. He pulled it out from his pocket and found a message from Faye. Just finished settling in. I set up a workspace for I set up a workspace for my music, so be prepared for some dope songs coming your way. Arthur chuckled to himself. Send a photo.